Hello, and welcome to another live chapter reading of Sea Mage, the Nightshade Guild Book 10 by Luisa Basio. That's brought to you by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Chapter 1. Swimming the Long Beach shoreline was a flippin' obstacle course. A chain of floating rectangles of darkness blocked Serena's path, stretching out in an infinite line along the coast. As one of the major international ports, the area was still feeling the strain and delays caused by the past few years. The seemingly unending line of cargo ships waiting to offload their goods made for an annoying impediment, keeping her from where she needed to be. For the next month, the Nightshade Guild tapped Serena with watching Amira, the princess heir of the Elven Kingdom, and the last thing she wanted was to be late for the handoff. Spike, her ocean-dwelling seahorse familiar, glided alongside her. His bony yellow spine almost glowed in the water. Part of her powers as a mermaid shifter was being able to communicate with all creatures, great and small, of the sea with help of an emerald ring inherited through her family line. You better get a move on. Spike curved his tail around her finger, giving a calming vibe. You'll do great. She'll love you. Everything will be perfect. After saving him from an incident, they'd bonded, and she'd had a tie with Spike. What he felt, she did, and likewise, within reason. The further she got from him, the more generalized the feelings and emotions became. The Pacific Ocean wasn't known for the miniature sea monster, an echo of its official genius name. But with warming waters and ever-changing environment, the area offered a few surprises. Liar. A few air bubbles escaped, even with her suppressed laugh. You know none of that is true, except that I better shake a tail. I promise to be in touch as much as possible. With a nod of his head that made him resemble his namesake of a horse, she slipped into the currents and quickly disappeared. She wished, not for the first time, that they lived full time in the same realms, but he lived in the sea, and she resided primarily on land. She telepathically called out to a nearby pod of dolphins. Their gentle murmurs greeted her, and one slid along either side of her. The ship closest loomed large, and the hum of its ever-running machinery sent vibrations through the churning waters. The area around the bottom, its bulge, appeared to be darker where it met the sea. Normal enough with the shadows of night, but a sense of uneasiness settled over her fins and she faltered. The dark mess seemed to shift as she moved, like one of those freaky ass paintings with the eyes that follow you in the room or the black and white bathroom tile that dances when you stare at it too much. All right, overdone. She didn't need her thoughts going there. She was aware of the mythos of mermaids in popular culture. She wasn't a woman like the woman in Splash who turned as soon as she touched salt water or at the teens in those Australian streaming programs like H2O, although she enjoyed the shows. Her talents were passed down through generations in her family through the maternal side. As her power strengthened, she learned to control the shift and they also were enhanced by her connection to the Nightshade Guild a few magical tattoos by the guild's artist, Nick. Mermaid Mage. The faintest whisper shivered along the currents. Serena picked up speed, spooked by fears of something unseen or perhaps merely imagined or simply nervous about the daunting task ahead. Soon enough, Serena and the dolphin pod passed through and together they breached the surface in a leap. The moon glimmered off their silver iridescent skin, and for a magical moment, Serena hovered airborne, her pink pearlescent mermaid tail flicking against the waves, and then they splashed down under the next crest. With a silent goodbye, she bid farewell to her temporary guard. She found that sea friends were always willing to help or share a swim. A figure sat on one of the buoys at the other edges of the bay. He raised his hand in greeting. The light flashed off the top of the buoy, made his strawberry blonde hair illuminate, even in darkness, and it cast alluring shadows over his bare chest. Petter. Out for a moonlight swim? he asked. 
They've been doing this extended interaction for a few months, randomly running into each other, primarily in the quiet spell of the evening, when fully human folk tended to be indoors. He guarded a kingdom of shifters and sea creatures somewhere close, invisible to the outside world, including including Serena, by protection spells. Official guild business tonight, unfortunately. From where she bobbed in the water, she saw the beach, completely devoid of any visitors at the moment. Time enough for a quick catch-up. Anything dangerous I should be aware of? Was he simply curious or prying? His facial expressions or tone of his voice didn't give off any ulterior motives. I'm afraid I'm not able to share that at the moment, she said. Super secret mission and all that, you know? And it's your month to be protecting the princess, then. A grin turned the corner of his mouth up, and not for the first time, she wondered what it would be like to kiss him. She shook off the feeling. He was distracting. She was He was distracting and digging for information. She narrowed her eyes, putting on her best game face. I have no idea what you're talking about. A forceful wave pushed her along, and she swam a few strokes. Petter dived into the water in one fluid move, only to surface a touching distance moments later. Listen, I worry about you. I understand you can't really tell me anything, but I've heard the rumors, as you probably have. The attack on the Elven Kingdom, the murder of the ruling king and queen, and the disappearance of the princess. Across the world, there have been a number of very public attacks, things the norms can't dismiss. Everything he said was true, but he probably didn't know the half of it. She communicated with the other mages in the Nightshade Guild via an app created just for them by Luna, who was a computer whiz. Luna also had suffered from some, ah, uh, magical misfortune. Spells she cast were destined to take an unfortunate twist until she met her mate. Thankfully, her tech work turned out better. On second thought, hell, Serena probably didn't know everything. If something small went wrong, the other mages might not share the details, or even know its potential importance. I cannot confirm any of that information. If possible, she didn't like to lie, especially to someone she liked, and she did like him. His green eyes seemed to grow even more probing, as if he was trying to read her. I'll respect that, but if you need me, you know how to contact me, and you have to promise that once this obligation is fulfilled, we'll get to spend some time together. Not floating in the sea doing this thing we've been doing, despite how fun it is. Being part of the Nightshade Guild made romantic attachments difficult. Truth, she more than liked being around Petter. She looked forward to these encounters, maybe too much. Just think, soon she may be surrounded by royalty with Princess Amira and King Petter. King, what was she thinking? She said her goodbyes and held her oath to spend more time with him close. It might be dangerous to have dreams of her own going into the next month. At the same time, looking forward to something as simple as a date might be an added incentive. A few more strokes brought her into the bay. The water here was shallow enough to stand, and she shifted into a full human form, feeling her toes dig into the sand. To the left, the lights of downtown Long Beach shone like a beacon. Her home city filled her heart with light, and the Pacific Ocean infused her soul with energy. To the right lay the shops, restaurants, and residential living of Belmont Shore. The Belmont Veterans Memorial Pier stretched from land over the sand and into the ocean. The wood creaked with the ebb and flow of the waves. Disrepair had set in over the years, and it had been deemed unsafe for pedestrian use, and the city struggled to rebuild. Someday, the restaurant at the tip would be rebuilt, and those drawn to the sea would come. For now, she only had to worry about the potential errant teenage couple making out in the darkness under the pier. But, in October, with temperatures at night creeping downward, even that was a rarity. A figure hunched over a bundle treaded through the stand, muttering to herself. Serena didn't know the other mages in the Nightshade Guild well. They each had their own territory, speciality, and baggage, including herself. Most of them only had become a mage because of some great occurrence that happened to the former person in the position. A rare few decided to retire. Demi looked a little worse for wear since the last time she'd seen her at the beginning of the year, when they'd all taken their pledge to care for the orphaned princess. Was that after a month of taking care of a baby or fighting to keep her alive? 
As she flicked her gaze over Serena, her eyes glowed yellow, the demon half evaluating her. People tended to underestimate Serena. Something about being a blonde from Southern California placed her in that category, which she tended to use to her advantage. If they knew she shifted into a mermaid with a pink tail, it added to the stereotype baggage. Any trouble? Nothing I couldn't handle. Although she used strong words, the delivery caused some worry. Demi's skills at exercising unwanted spirits from the human hosts were legendary. What the hell happened that rocked her so much? But she'd learned if you stay quiet, often the other person filled the quiet space with more information. Demi gave the slightest shrug with one shoulder and rubbed her thumb over her index finger. Small tells. She was hiding something. We had some demon trouble, but I took care of the problem and you should be good. Demons? Another good reason Sarita considered taking Amira out to sea for some of her babysitting duties. Before she physically took hold of the little girl, she did a quick drying spell on herself. Wouldn't want to get the princess wet or perhaps catch a chill. She closed her eyes, swirled her finger around her body, and a mini whirlwind dried her in a flash. Show off, Demi smirked. It was good to see her lighten a bit. Maybe like a new parent, she only needed some rest and rejuvenation. A girl's gotta do what a girl's gotta do, Serena shrugged. You good? Demi glanced toward the blackness of the night ocean, her eyes spanning the landscape. I will be. For a moment, she held the small child close and whispered something to her, and finally handed over a bag of necessities and the toddler. Once she was safely ensconced in Serena's arms, Amira watched her half-demon caretaker walk away. Demi, drain, she cooed. Not for the first time, and probably not the last, Sabrina had, Serena wished she had more time to spend with Demi, to get to know her better, and to learn what made her smile. It must be bittersweet to devote so much energy into keeping the squirming little one safe, and then simply to just hand her off. So far, every mage had gone through it, one a month since January. What was the poor child going through from one caregiver to another? She shifted the weight of the bag to be secure on one shoulder and balanced Amira on the other side. Instead of adventuring by sea, she took the land route home through the city. From here, it was a short walk to her family's home in Belmont. Not that they could afford it at today's market prices. It had been her grandmother's house, handed down to the next generation of mermaid. A child. She thought she was prepared until this actual moment arrived. She was a member of the Nightshade Guild, protecting the world. Well, make that multiple worlds, realms, or whatever. What the hell was she supposed to do with a toddler, alone, for an entire month? Sure, she'd been around kids. She loved them. She had two nieces and a nephew. She practically lived with them. Not really. Babysitting to actual parenting was a far stretch, especially when anyone in the paranormal world, and then some, hunted for the hair of the elven kingdom and its magic. It's not like she had any children of her own, though. You know, 24-7, full-time. Well, you get the idea. Damn. Motion out of the corner of her eye caught her attention. Shadows under the pier shifted. Did the darkness just get darker? How was that possible? A sensation tingled along the back of her neck, and she shivered. Demi traveled via the shadows. What if whatever haunted Serena had followed her? By the time she turned to look fully, nothing was there. All this talk of demons, she muttered as she deftly walked barefoot through the cool sand. Layers beneath, the seawater offered a centering flow. Got me on edge. We're going to have an uh, uneventful, peaceful month, right, sweet pea? He knew her secret but she didn't know all of his. As a leader of his domain, Petter recognized and spoke to all sea-leaving creatures. From his vantage point, he watched the flip of her pink mermaid tail as she headed toward the shore, eventually transforming into her human form. The sway of her hips and swirls of blonde hair hanging down her back mesmerized him as she emerged from the water. It was harder and harder to be around her without trying to take their tension-filled friendship further. Part of him wanted to follow her and make sure everything was all right, that she was safe. But ultimately, it wasn't the way to win her heart. He knew enough about Serena to get she valued her independence and took her role as a mage seriously. 
Plus, with her fierce nature, there wasn't much a chance of anything causing her harm. The buoy undulated in the gentle fall currents. Petter slipped off the floating device, giving the side a pet as he dived into the warmth. This time of year, the mellow autumn and upcoming winter was his favorite in South California, and a reason why he decided to stay. The water along the Pacific coast tended to stay warm. Before he headed home, he'd do a round of surveillance along the row of ships waiting to dock at the port. Between the man-made oil, the man-made oil lines, the cargo ships, and recreational vehicles, it was getting downright crowded in the waters. All in all, the night usually proved to be quiet, almost too quiet. Usually various sea life took advantage of the lack of humans to roam more freely. The moment he'd met Serena, he knew she was more than the beach babe persona she affected lying on her pink sparkly tower in the sand. Even before he'd interacted with the sea mage in her transformed mermaid form, he sensed the dual nature. A powerful chemical current connected them, even if she didn't want to admit it yet. And that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the reading of Sea Mage, The Nightshade Guild Book 10 by Luisa Basio. Have a good day.